How's it going, everybody? C Rad TV back here with another video. So, of course, it's time for another Detroit Lions 2023 NFL Draft Preview. So, in the last draft preview, we took a look at the top day three quarterback prospects for rounds four through seven of the 2023 NFL Draft class. In this video, we're going to take a look at the top running back prospects for rounds four through seven of the 2023 NFL Draft class. Since there are quite a number of quarterback prospects, uh, running back prospects are expected to go in the later rounds. Since, you know, it doesn't hurt to help have another running back in the field to be right behind um, David Montgomery and DeAndre Swift, especially if Swift goes down with more health issues. You know, someone helped take the rock behind both of them after Jamal Williams left to go to New Orleans. But anyway, though, let's take a look at some of these top prospects and see who the Lions should take a look at in the day three of the draft. So anyway, let's go. So the first running back we're going to go over here, hailing out of pit, steady 5'10", weighing 250 pounds. We got Israel Abanaconda. That's the last name. It's a bit of a tongue twist. But anyway, for Israel strengths, um, has quality explosive if out of cuts, builds up speed easily, can maintain it in a foot race, press the body type for back, ideal bulk weight distribution, effective against skinny through gaps, makes himself a small target, maintains momentum well through contact, body control stands out as one of his best assets, Feen and Flo shine running on the inside. Won't go gently to the sideline if he has any available grass. Able to win as both a bruiser and finesse back. Plays with a natural low center of gravity. In terms of weaknesses, though, tends to lob himself as a blocker rather than use his hands and strike. Late to recognize blitzes, can pick them up. Fire receivers largely untapped. Will need time to develop as a pro. Too eager to spin and turn his body away from the defensive. Size and speed, it won't alter the makeup of a running back room. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints. But overall, a lot of things to like out of Israel's game. Does a lot of things right. Definitely someone to keep an eye on for sure. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Georgia, standing 6 feet tall, weighing 208 pounds. We got Kenny McIntosh. So for Kenny's strengths, natural hand catcher, good hand-eye coordination, Sells movement with his body language, can get defenders tripped up. Instinctive runner, has a promising feel for attacking cutback opportunities. Forward lean improved as a senior. Ball tracking skills impressive. Quick to reorientate, can get downhill after the catch. Fairly complete athlete, no, without any glaring weaknesses physically. Decisive runner when he spots openings. In terms of weaknesses though, upright runner. Will need improvement with the felt with dropping his pads into contact. Always invasive mode. When trying to avoid tackles rather than just playing into his power. Too easily he's knocked off. Of um, course, when he takes contact, tends to round off on a lot of his movements as he lacks clean pads. He can drive ability when changed directions. Will need more experience to control and pass protection. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to the free agent running back CJ Procease. That last name is a bit of a tongue twister, but anyway, though. In terms for Kenny, though. Solid prospect, a lot of things to like on for sure. Maybe someone to keep an eye on in the later rounds. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Alburn, standing 6 feet tall, weighing 213 pounds. We got Tank Bigsby. So for Tank strengths, he checks off the size parameters teams are looking for, plays with good balance through his cuts, tempo and field and space can catch would-be tackles off block guard, able to regain footing after being tripped up, sufficient burst through the line and into the second level, Body language is tricky to read for opponents. Can hold his own as a pass blocker. Not a contact developing runner, but has the necessary strength and size to get the job done. In terms of his weaknesses, though, has some inside decisiveness, indecisiveness when it comes to reading blocks and attacking leverage. One speed runner, cat lacks upper echelon burst or lateral quickness. Pad level sits a little high most of the time. Somewhat linear running style. It will acquire more yards provided rather than yards created. Leg drive overall power, typical for his size. Somewhat plain running style, lack of creativity will make it hard to find hidden yardage once his blocks failed. He's also been listed as a player that could disappoint this draft class because even though he was a highly productive runner in the SEC, would in that production will tend to draw plenty of love from a lot of NFL teams. His lack of dynamic traits still could make him a career depth back as like a second or third strainer that only comes in on certain snaps. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Wayne Gullman of the Seattle Seahawks. Overall, though, a lot of things to like on him for sure, you know, and I really don't have a problem with him being a career depth back because that's probably what we're looking for in a running back in the later rounds, probably. So, yeah, this is someone I would take it worth be worth taking a look at despite a lot of what scouts say. Still someone to keep an eye on. 
So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Central Michigan, standing 5'11", weighing 220 pounds, we got Lou Nichols. So for Lou's strengths, he wraps up the top speed in a hurry once he gets in lane. Workhorse body, ideal size for the NFL level. Strong runner, plays behind his pads, will knock it back, defenders on contact. Excellent burst, long speed for his size, plays very well to the ground, shows good flexibility in his lower body. Hits the hole hard, won't hesitate at the line of scrimmage. Turns his weaknesses, though he's more of a meat and potatoes runner in space. Lacks the looseness to cut back or juke defenders. Disinterested blocker, too often late to pick up on his surroundings. Hands usually sin the holsters, don't come out until pass rushers are in his chest. Modest tackle breaking ability, production dive bomb in his final year will we'll raise some questions. And he looked a tick slower in his final year at Central Michigan. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been declared to like Raquel Armstead of the D.C. Defenders of the XFL. Overall, though, a lot of things to like out of his game, though. Fair, he has good flexibility, a lot of things to like. This is someone I would keep an eye on for sure. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Utah, sitting 6'2", weighing 240 pounds, we got Tavon Thomas. So for Tavon's strength, immaculate size that rivals most fullbacks. Body control and adjustability at the line of scrimmage. Good for his size. Brings plenty of pop in his pads on initial contact. Downhill runner. Won't deliberate when he has openings. Hard runner regardless of the situation. Size and potential as a pass blocker are extensing. Vision sufficient to identify and react well at the line of scrimmage. Also been listed as one of the best big sweeper picks in this draft class. Because even though he did have a huge drop off in production from 2021 to 2022... It might diminish his buzz, despite the fact that he's a hard-charging runner with excellent size and strength to get yards between the tackles. In terms of his weaknesses, though, so other than the production drop-off, um, subpar speed, modest level of juice as a runner, low willingness value in space, lack of dash technique and pass protection, only an improvement to be a three-down back. Look better as a junior while playing at a lighter weight. Pads are naturally high, creates issues when being chopped down. Struggles to make himself a small target or squeeze through gaps. More likely to get a few yards and end up in a cloud of dust and break tackles. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to Royce Freeman at the Houston Texans. Overall, though, a lot of things to like out of him for sure. Can always fight to get extra yardage, you know. Someone to keep an eye on for sure. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Texas, standing 6'1", weighing 220 pounds. We got Roshan Johnson. So for Roshan... He's your prototype in tangibles running back. But in terms of his strength, still fearless blocker, plays up to his size, rushes to get his hands on defenders. Frame's going to wow scouts when they get up close. Dirty yards runner can push around smaller linebackers. Stout pass blocker. Sufficient size and technique. Long speed's adequate when he gets rolling. Natural inside runner has the power to win in short yardage situations. Has a lot of tread left on the tires due to his rotational roll at Texas. In terms of his weaknesses, though, stiff and linear running style it provides, provides very little wiggle room in space. Slow roller, doesn't have to burst to consistently escape contact. Lower body's too easily chopped down as a result of average contact balance. Limited jut cut, small range of motion, makes it hard to evade immediate pressure. Will be out of place as a receiver, shouldn't be expected to create after the catch. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to free agent running back Jordan Howard. Overall, though, a lot of things to like out of him for sure, especially as a blocker to help give Goff some protection to get the ball out. You know, maybe someone to keep an eye on as a rotational back for sure. All right, so the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of North Dakota State, standing 6'1", weighing 235 pounds. We got Hunter Wumke. So for Hunter, he's your prototype blocking running back, so he's very good in blocking and giving protection. In terms of his strengths, Broadly built with a body that will transplant very well to the big leagues. High effort blocker puts everything he has in the contact. Leg drive or body power allows him to push through the muck and win three tough yards. Comfortable peeling out in the space. Running routes given experience as a tight end. Versatility and special teams potential helps him find a way onto a roster. Plays with good pad level and forward lean. Terms his weaknesses though. Tweener prospect too small for tight end. Not a natural running back though. Small rain span hurts both with sustaining blocks and real and poorly thrown passes. Catch radius is going to inhibit it when fighting for the ball. More of a bowling ball than a creator as a runner. Speed around the corner is limited. Ceiling as a full-time running back is limited. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to free agent running back Ryan Null. Overall, though, there are a lot of things to like out of his game for sure. You know, very powerful too. You know, definitely someone to keep an eye on for sure. 
So the next player we're going to look at here, hailing out of Illinois, steady, 5'9", weighing 210 pounds, we got Chase Brown. So for Chase's strength, smooth runner, efficient and controlled in adjustments, hand and ball tracking will make him dangerous on wheel routes, remarkable vision, anticipation, which allows him to react before most defenders zero in on him, adequate play speed for the NFL level, flow and feel on outside runs, could be dynamic in a zone-heavy run scheme. Quick to identify and attack cutback opportunities. Plays low to the ground. Takes advantage of his build. In terms of his uh, weaknesses, though, doesn't have ideal size to run between the tackles. Short strider who can get caught from behind at times when he shouldn't. Um, technique and feel as a blocker needs work. Feel for cutback. Williams is present. He struggles to gear down, make sharp cuts when immediate C. Modest power and play strength will be a larger issue against bigger opponents. He's not an opposing or violent runner. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Keyshawn Vaughn of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Overall, a lot of things to like out of his game for sure, especially when you run on the outside. Maybe someone to have, keep an eye on to have in for screen passes, but definitely could be someone to be a good third back. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Oklahoma, standing 5'10", weighing 215 pounds, we got Eric Ray. So for Eric Strength's competent pass catcher can make up for a small catch radius with sticky hands. Routes are savvy, sharply run, intuitive runner, good creativity as far as spins and jump cuts. Fish and a flow stand out when he has room to maneuver. Won't go down to half harder tackle attempts. Changes tempo to keep defenders guessing. Knows how to make himself available as a receiver when his plays go off script. In terms of his weaknesses, though, explosive and balance through contact look better in this junior season. Too eager to bounce runs outside and look for off ramps. Low cut build, short stride, impede his long speed. Not the type of athlete that will be able to pull away in the race. Walks the line between patience and hesitation at times while he lets his block set up. Somewhat conservative near his sideline will step out rather than fight for yards. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's maybe compared to Dare O'Gunboleo of the Houston Texans. But overall, solid prospect. A lot of things to like out of his game for sure. Somebody keep an eye on 100%. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Kansas State, standing 5'5", five five, weighing 175 pounds, we got Deuce Vaughn. So for Deuce's strengths, he plays with tenacity, won't back down, patient runner, won't rush into his lineman, experience and ad lib ability, which shows up as a receiver when he plays, break, plays breakdown. Natural leverage, low pad level, are unmatched. Sharp change of direction, allows him to attack unique angles. Twitchy lower body, lateral agility, allows him to stake, shake, skate away for sloppy tacklers. Impressive burst. In terms of his weaknesses, though, his size takes him off the board for some teams. Easy to bring down for most defenders, will likely need to provide value as a returner to guarantee a roster spot. Small catch radius makes it hard to adjust for missed thrown passes. Athleticism may not be enough to offset size limitations in the NFL. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Philip Lindsay of the Indianapolis Colts. But overall, a lot of things like out of his game. But, you know, size really doesn't mean 100% everything to me. You know, but maybe someone to keep an eye on for, like, special teams as a punt returner or a kick returner. You know, someone maybe for special teams 100%. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Appalachian State, standing 6'2", weighing 224 pounds. We got Cameron Run Peoples. So for Cameron Run Strengths, Good build-up speed, can pull away from the linebackers downfield. Plenty of length and strength to pass protection. Could be a legitimate three-down back, given his body type and ability in the passing game. Reliable hands, decisive runner, won't shy away from contact. In terms of weaknesses, though, linear runner, tiny range of motion, lack of wiggle makes him a hittable target at all levels. Balance and body control are lacking. Thin lower body, spindly legs lead to modest power. Too easy to stand upright, slow down on contact, clumsy in the hole, struggles to avoid contact. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to Bo Scarborough with the Birmingham Stallions of the USFL. Overall, a lot of things to like out of his game. Big body, very physical too, could offer some versatility in the passing game too. Maybe someone to keep an eye on for passing downs as a passing back. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of USC, standing 5'10", weighing 205 pounds, we got Travis Dye. So for Travis's strengths, play looks good, pad level, tenacity through contact, and stronger than he looks. Vision, adjustability at the line of scrimmage, impressive, reads, blocks, well, has a refined feel for leverage. Time and body control allows him to navigate condensed running lanes. In terms of his weaknesses, though, his size and strength are sufficient. He will have a much harder time breaking NFL tackles. 
Uh, bursts and long speed aren't going to produce much in the way of chunk yardage. Awareness is the blockers on the field. Creativity and looseness in the open lane field are lacking. Not going to push the pile. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Jim Michael Hasty at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Overall, there are a lot of things to like out of him for sure. You know, may maybe has some versatility to be a someone in special teams as a returner at for kick and punts. So the next player we're gonna go over here, hailing out of Minnesota, standing five foot nine, weighing two hundred and ten pounds. We got Mohammed Ibrahim. So for Mohammed's strengths, wastes very little space in motion, following his block, savvy blocker, has the awareness to react quickly to stunts and blitzes, excellent vision, anticipation, plays with little power up pads and natural leverage. Fearless through contact will never shy away from hitting someone. In terms of weaknesses, though, slow low rolling runner, lacks straight line speed, lacks bursts to explode through openings, pull away from linebackers, takes contact hard, tends to get pushed around a bit easily. Modest arm length lends to leads to slipping off pass block attempts. Balance is very hit or miss. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Larry Round Three of the Los Angeles Chargers. Overall, a lot of things to like out of his game for sure, but some limitations though. Maybe someone has a third back to take reps while um Montgomery or Swift take get some rest. So the next player we're gonna look, take a look at here. Hailing out of Northwestern, standing five foot ten, weighing two hundred and ten pounds. We got Evan Hull. So for Evan Strengths, he fights hard for yards, comfortable working between the tackles. Keep composure after breaking tackles. Can maintain momentum downfield. Takes smart angles. Lets his blocker set up ahead of him. Makes the most of his ava available wig on waist. No movement. Uh, in terms of his weaknesses, though, he's a one-gear runner. Rarely opens up coming through the hole. Play speed's a major issue at the NFL wave level if he gets keeps it bottled up. Stiff movements. Lack of lower body flexibility. Makes it easy to read in space. Blocking tenacity is there, but his strength and technique aren't ready yet. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Max Borgia to Houston Roughnecks from the XFL. Overall, though, what a thing to like out of Evans' game for sure. Always fights hard, plays hard. You know, maybe someone has a third down back for sure, or be a yeah, third string back. So the next player we're going to take a look at here, hailing out of Louisville, standing 5'10", weighing 210 pounds, we got Tyon Evans. So for Tyon strengths, decisive at the line, Size and strength knock back linebackers on initial contact. Adequate burst to get through holes can break into space. Violent runner plays behind his pads, puts everything into contact. Offensive engine won't slow down until he hits the ground. In terms of his weaknesses, though, his small body work, multiple transfers could be a concern for him. Gets tossed around as a blocker. Short strider will be run down by defensive backs. That balance is below average. Limited passing game experience. Technique as a blocker is a wreck. Limited face of Facing this in space. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to Zonovan Knight of the New York Jets. Overall, there are a lot of things to like out of his game. You know, always plays through a contact well, plays violently. Definitely a Dan Campbell type of player. Maybe someone has a third death stream back for sure. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Arizona State, standing six feet tall, weighing 198 pounds. We got... Xavian Validate. That first thing could be a bit of a tongue twister. For, like, for Xavian Strengths, willing blocker will put his body in the way. Engage him with intensity. Won't go into a lower power mode and pass protection. Smart runner. Takes advantage of leverage. Maximizes what his blockers give him. Good leg drive effort in the pile. Term his weaknesses though. He's built more like a receiver than a running back. One speed runner will have a hard time gearing up and pulling away from defenders. Upright style, lack of lower body will make him easy to slow down in traffic. Balance through cuts and contact is limited. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Josh Justin Davis at the Ottawa Red Blacks of the CFL. Overall, a lot of things to like out of his game for sure. And very smart too. You know, with his build, more like a receiver though. Maybe could be someone to keep an eye on for special teams. And the final running back, the final player we're going to take a look at in this video, hailing out of Wyoming, standing 5'10", weighing 204 pounds, we got Titus Sween. So for Titus, his strength, good at acceleration, allows him to slip past linebackers as he hits the second level. Long strider, webs up well when he gets the runway. Patient at the line, won't overcommit early. Decisive when defenders enter his field of view. In terms of his weaknesses, though, he's oddly built with a hittable top-heavy frame. Very reckless of ball security will lead to fumble issues against stronger, more accurate hits. Lacks ideal size to pass block, 
blitz and shut down blitzer. It's not a strong finisher at the end of runs. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to the now retired running back, Nico Evans. Overall, though, um, a lot of things to like out of his game for sure, but, you know, that turnover thing could be an issue, so he's got to learn to protect the ball better, but, you know, if he can protect the ball better and the coaching staff can get the most out of him, maybe someone 100% to keep an eye on for a third string back. But, yeah, anyway, that'll wrap it up here for this um, Detroit Lions 2023 NFL Draft Preview. So, yeah, a lot of interesting running back prospects to keep an eye on for sure, especially when he can put in special teams into effect. You know, with kick return and punt return since, you know, there's always improvement to improve on special teams and get some returners in there. You know, definitely some interesting prospects to keep an eye on, especially not only that, but also as third straight backs behind um, David Montgomery and DeAndre Swift. And some good options for sure, especially if, like, DeAndre Swift goes down again if he continues to have health issues. You know, maybe someone that could become the number two running back, depending on what happens with DeAndre Swift this year, if he can step back up or if he has more health issues again. Because if Swift has more health issues, there's a pretty strong chance that Swift may be gone at the end of the year. But yeah, anyway, though, that'll wrap it up for this draft preview. So in the next draft preview, we're going to take a look at some top wide receiver prospects for rounds four through seven of the draft. And yeah, that video comes out soon. But anyway, that'll wrap it up here. That's all I'm going to say. Hope it was a great day, and I'll see you whatever I make next. I'm out.